Okay, now that we have our base project up and running, uh, the minimum amount of files that we need to get this, this working, and we're just gonna add along the way so we know where all the, the code is coming from. Next thing we wanna add is native win. And I, you don't, you don't need to add it. I personally think it makes it a lot faster to get up and running for styles, especially if you wanna copy something else. It allows us to reuse some of the, the components over and over again. And I also use it in web as well. So it translates pretty well over to uh, Expo as well. So first thing we wanna do is skip the first project because we already have our application. We just wanna add it to our existing app. So we're gonna copy and paste these two lines and we're going to let's, let's stop this from running so we're going to npm install native win and then we're going to install tailwind css so we need both of those things to get this up and running and then we're going to set it up so there's this nice commit of uh, this nice uh, cli command to actually create a folder for us so we can see that tailwind.config.js gets created and the one change we want to make is the files that it's going to be used in. And we can see right here, they give us an example. So let's copy and paste that. But the difference is we don't have an app.js file. So you can see in our, in our code base, we don't have app.js. And this is from like a regular React Native. But what we do have is app, components, and hooks. So we want to be able to use native wind in the app and components folder. Hooks, there's no styling, so you don't really need it there. Assets, there's no styling, so you don't need it there as well. So we're gonna change it to app, lowercase, and components. So all this does is tells uh, Expo that we wanna use this native, or this tailwind uh, styling in this folder. So all of the files inside of this app folder and all of the files inside this components folder. And all the files, whether it's a JS file, JSX, TS, and TSX, uh, we're gonna use TSX for most of our files, um, TSX for all of the components, TS for the regular JavaScript. And then there, I think there is some JavaScript, you can see that Babel config uh, is still using JS, but if we have to create anything new, it's gonna be using TypeScript. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna add it to the Babel plugin as well, so. And then that's it, apparently. So let's rerun this. And if we do Command D, we can reload it. And make sure you reload this. Anytime you do a native module add, you're gonna have to start and stop it sometimes. Um, so the changes take effect. And in order to get started to use this, we got to import some class names. So we have class name flex items. So we're, let's use this as an example. And we could go to the tabs. So we have this home component. This is the only component we have right now. So we're going to add this class name class. And then we can see home gets recentered. So if we do change it back on to black, we can see it gets changed to black. We could also change the text to white. We could do font bold, text large. And so you can just see how fast it is to add new styles to items. And then that will also take effect in components as well. So please be sure to remember, and I always forget this sometimes as well, is that if you were to add another folder that has view components in it, you're gonna have to add it to your, your Tailwind config here um, so that it takes effect as well. And so next thing we're going to do is add some empty pages and folders. And so in order to do that, actually, you know what? First thing we're gonna do is do Expo Router. So in order to navigate from page to page, we have this structure of tabs, index, layout. Like I said, we need a index file and a layout in each thing that we have. Um, and that's because eventually we're gonna need to have more than one page and more than one tab. Um, so actually, let's just see what that looks like. So in TikTok, we have 
we have a home screen, we have a friends screen, and we have a camera screen, inbox screen, and profile page. And so we're going to add all of those pages right now. So we're going to add some new tabs here. So we already got home. So we're going to five five new ones. So we're going to add friends, friends, name it friends, and then we're going to add camera. inbox and then profile and hopefully this doesn't make it so obvious that I can't type correctly and so it's gonna yell at us because none of these pages exist so we have to add them to the tabs section so we're gonna add a new file called friends.tsx and let's just copy over the code from the home screen. And of course that breaks everything. But that's fine. We'll fix it in a second. So we have friends. Let's just say friends. And I also don't know why I'm making everything black. Font bold, text black. Okay. And then we're going to add camera. Inbox. And profile. And then let's try to start our application again. Screen names must be unique. Index, friends, camera, profile. Let's go to, oh, we have index twice. Oh, that will do it. Okay, what is it now? No route named inbox exists in nested children. That's because we did. See, I think this is why errors are helpful. Please let me know if that's not true. So we got tabs. We got home, friends, camera, inbox, profile, and this random inbox from reloading. Let's see. Inbox. Did I rename something like that? I think it just didn't take effect, the change. So I got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there we go. See, that's why sometimes you got to reset it. I had deleted the file, I changed the file name, but it's still, Expo still thought it was there. So now we got all these tabs at the bottom profile, inbox, camera, friends, home. And so we got our, at least our base files up and running. Um, and then we're actually going to add a new, new navigator as well. So we're going to do authentication because when we first come to the app, uh, TikTok and a lot of other social applications force you to log in first, of course. And then, then you could get to this home page to see your friends. Um, and so we're going to create a new folder. And we're going to name this one uh, off. And like I said before, we need every new folder needs a layout.tsx and an index.tsx. And then we're going to also going to add a sign up. I'm just going to copy some of the code from over here. Auth index. Sign up. And then we're going to add a new. So in our layout folder, we can check out what this one looks like. This is where we actually declare the navigation. And so we don't want another tabs one. We want to do a stack screen. So we can see in this first one, our stack is tabs. 
and then we have not found. So you could have stacks inside of stacks. So right now we have a parent stack screen. In that stack screen, we have a tab navigator. And if you really wanted to, you could have another set of stack screens. So let's say if you were to go to, I don't know, profile, in that profile, you could have child pages of maybe followers, likes, liked photos, or bookmarks, or whatever it may be. And so you could put another screen uh, infinitely if you really wanted to. Um, but we're going to keep it pretty simple for right now. So we're going to go to layout. And let's just copy some of this. So we don't need all of this stuff. So all we really need is the stack. So in the stack, we're going to have, uh, what did I say? Um, oh, index, sign up and index. And we don't want to show the header. So we have the options of header shown false, just like we have on this one. And then we have to define the parent route so right now we just have tabs and we want to do and actually let's see <clears throat> just want to show if we have header shown true we can see we have this this top part which doesn't look that great um so we can we're going to eventually make our own header with our own custom icon the back button and hide and show based on different things um so by default it shows so what you have to do is put header shown false in order to hide it. it makes it super easy though and then we're going to add off header shown false as well and then i think we want to do let's do reload so then we could see the initial by default since it's on top we could define the initial route as well but the first screen is auth index and we don't even see the tabs but if we were to remove it oh that's because okay here's a funny one so because it's already defined our folder structure the since it's a file based system it still shows even if you don't put the route itself um, if you don't put the route that I've definitely run that when I first started doing an expo route, it didn't really make sense to me. But if you ever use Next.js, it's very similar file based routing system. And that allows us to, if we want to build this for web as well, it's directly translatable, the routes. Um, and it's built on top of React navigation. If you've ever used React Native at all, um, React Native was, our React navigation was the go to for a, a while. Um, but now it's uh, expo router, which is fairly new. So we have our auth router or our auth stack with an index and a sign up page. And let's navigate to our tab. So we could just see auth index. Let's just rename this to login because this is what the page would actually be. And in order to get to another page, we could use this link. Uh, let's go home. And we could do tabs. And we're going to import link from Expo Router. And we click home and we go to the home screen. So let's, we don't have a back button, so let's just do it again. Uh, we have this login page, which in the, in the future state will have obviously two forms of email and password to be able to authenticate first. And then once you're authenticated, it would be able to uh, log in. Yeah. This is a button. So there's a couple different ways to do linking in Expo Router. We could use this link tag. And then also we can either do that or we could do const and we can import uh, router from use router. And let's see, it's giving us because it's never read. And we could use regular react native component so i like using this because let's just remove the press for right now we could see the touchable opacity versus the link button looks a little bit different so i personally like the touchable opacity versus 
the overlay. It just looks a lot nicer. And you can customize it as well. So back to Tailwind. We could do black, background, rounded, large. Ah, interesting. Okay. It wasn't that class name wasn't working. It was just the BG black. Okay. So class name text white. And then font dash bold text large. Okay. Just like that, we have our login button that has touchable opacity. And when we click on it, it does not work because cannot read property push of undefined. Oh, we bit router. There we go. See, that's why we use TypeScript and I wasn't paying attention. So we could either do links two different ways to go back to the first page. We could import the link from Expo router and just define it here. Um, I don't think class name actually works on this specific component. That's the one downside of uh, native wind is that it doesn't always take effect the same way. Um, although, oddly enough, it does use the back background and the padding, but it doesn't round the corners. And so I just usually like to use touch opacity instead because I just have more control over it and I like the feedback that it provides. And so there we go. We have a bunch of blank pages, but we have a scaffolding of the files that we're going to eventually start adding to. So